Hey Jules Bless Vegan and as always welcome to my channel and for those of you who are new I know you can benefit. So it's already the fourth Sunday of Advent which makes complete sense because Christmas is only a couple of days away. But you're like wait fourth Sunday it's only the 22nd day of our challenge. That's because we actually started on Sunday the first Sunday. So it's not like we had to count up to the Sunday. We started on the first Sunday and we are at the fourth Sunday already. But congratulations to those of you who have chosen to participate in our random acts of kindness in preparing our hearts for the coming of the Lord, but mostly just spreading tiny little Christmases each day with a random act of kindness that have largely been completely free, which is fantastic. So today was to do something unexpected for someone. Something unexpected. Um, I feel like I did do unexpected things for people, but they don't even know it yet because like I wrote Christmas cards. Um, we gave $100 to each of our kids to get something for the grandkids. Um, I sent, you know, a Starbucks card. Like I did things for people that they don't even know yet, but that's the beauty of it. It'll be a blessing to them in time, but it's already a blessing in heaven and for myself that I dared to do it. So doing something unexpected, I absolutely did that. And it totally falls in line with what tomorrow's goal is. And tomorrow for day 23 is to give a treat to your postal carrier. <laughs> I love that. When I was a little girl, my sister Vanessa and I loved to put our little money together and run and thank the postal worker because we just always had a great meal person and, and we knew it meant so much to them. So I'm not as familiar with my people up here, but because of the things I did today, I will most certainly be using the postal carriers tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead and put a Christmas card. I'll just tape it to the box outside. I'm just saying, you know, thank you for your service. Merry Christmas. And then when I go into the post office tomorrow, because some of the things I actually need uh, to be, you know, weighed and measured and whatever, I will go ahead and maybe give each of them a candy cane and just say, God bless you. So give a treat to your postal worker. Can you do it? That's for day 23. I just think that's joyous. Again, it's just one more random act of kindness. And that in doing that, it exponentially goes out into the universe, um, just spreading good energy and cheer. Even if at the moment the person doesn't recognize it or doesn't respond in a way that you hope, trust me, cha-ching in heaven, and just positive energy in the world, which is brilliant. So I just wanted to um, talk one more time a moment on Advent, which is a time of waiting. It's literally a time of waiting. We're waiting for the baby Jesus to be born into the world once again. We're waiting for the promises of God, even though they take place. It's like, well, I mean, can't you just prepare for Christmas once in your life? I mean, it comes every year. What's the big deal? Well, you know what? That's the magic of every day. I mean, we wake up by God's grace every day, but we know that the momentum and the interactions and what's going on in life is different every single day. Could you imagine if every Monday was predictable, every Tuesday was predictable? I mean, some people think they would want that, you know, but I'm certain they wouldn't. Like, honestly, um, life is in motion, right? The only constant in life is change. And so, no, it's not enough to say, well, I celebrated Advent when I was four years old and had a little calendar with chocolates in it. And I've already done that. You haven't done anything because life is daily and it changes every moment. And God has great plans and graces waiting for those who dare to participate in it. So this is the fourth Sunday of Lent, as I suggested. And if you remember back to our first video, which was just before December 1st. So literally November 30th, I was explaining, oh, tomorrow's the first day of Advent. You guys should participate. <laughs> oh my goodness, how quickly these days already went, right? Um, but again, for those of you who are just joining us, you're right on time because we still have a couple of days of this challenge. And even to participate, it, or participate in it for just one day is still brilliant. It's so brilliant. Um, so what I was saying was that each of the weeks of Advent have a theme. And, you know, it starts with hope. 
the hope of the Lord returning. And then it goes on to peace and having peace in your heart and the anxiousness, you know, because there is an anxiety. Like kids want it now. When you think of Christmas, they want it yesterday. Where's my gift? And can I have it yet? And and that waiting, that that's a joy in our heart that we should all have for the coming of the Lord. I don't understand it all, but I believe it and I accept it. And if we have that excitement of a child in our heart, oh my gosh, what a great way to live. And children just get so excited. They want to shake those gifts under the tree and they want to guess, you know, what, what it is. And, and that same magic in our heart that God will return. When the first, when Jesus first left, his apostles thought he literally meant he was going to be right back. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of the disciples and apostles and the people of the day, you know, just got their bags ready. And they were just like, cool, we can just kick back for the weekend. He'll be back on Monday. Not so much. <laughs> uh, but God never wants us to rest on our laurels because whenever he does come, we will absolutely know, the whole universe will know, and neatly you will hear an inner voice saying, I'm back. And uh, we don't need to be concerned about that, but children get so anxious, and, and I remember it because my birthday is two days after Christmas, so it wasn't just Christmas, but that my birthday was coming, and I just had that whole anxiety of, and a healthy anxiety, but the excitement of waiting. And so, uh, we have peace, be at peace, it's going to happen. And then finally, joy, you know, the joy of realizing that time is passing and that it's even more near. And then finally, today is love. The fourth Sunday is just love, the absolute recognition of the love that Jesus expressed by saying, ah, this is insane, <laughs> but I'm willing to do it. I'm going to do this walk. I'm going to model grace. I'm going to be a lamb in the slaughter uh, for these people to know a better way. I'm going to give my life. Are you kidding me, Father? He did stop in Gethsemane to say, uh, if this cup could pass, I really wouldn't mind. And God was like, yeah, that's a no, son. Sorry. And of course, people are so puzzled by uh, how... He can be the son and be the father. Uh, but there was an agreement within himself that he would be God in human form and serve in that role as son, the third person of the Holy Trinity, three in one, which is a whole nother talk for another day. But I kind of get it. I mean, we all serve different roles, right? I mean, we are a daughter to some parents. We may be a mother to some children. We're a sister to a brother or, you know, we play many roles within ourselves. We're all one person, but we serve many roles. So it's not that impossible if, you, if you're struggling with that concept. I've never had any trouble with it at all. I, I dug the concept of the Holy Trinity. I'm all in. Uh, but anyway, it's love. And there was never more love modeled than Jesus and his walk. And being on that cross and saying, you know what, I will be the sacrifice so that you guys may have hope and grace and a chance, you know, at eternal life and salvation once again, which was sadly lost by some choices Adam and Eve made. And I don't even blame them. I say, peace be with you. I'm a compulsive overeater. I have no idea how quickly I would have stolen from that tree. <laughs> I'm playing. I, I, I don't know. You know, I don't presume to know. The older I get, I don't presume to know. I know everybody is in need of love and grace and prayer. And for that, I am completely on board. Uh, but otherwise, I just can't presume to know, which is why I just leave all of that to God and trust that he is merciful. All right. So let's look again. Today was to do something unexpected for someone. I'd like to think that I did. And that tomorrow is give a treat to your postal carrier. I just love that. The post office is the underdog right now with so many competitive, you know, UPS and all those things that I am happy to celebrate them. All right. Like if you like, join us if you haven't. And until we talk again, best of all, know that I prayed for you at Mass, put you in the prayer book, and trust that you are blessed.